Hallelujah. Word of the Lamb Ministries welcomes you to Sunday message. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm just letting you know that we're once again back in the space where we were last week. We were in a different place, in a different space. Now we're here. Amen. Glory to God. Get yourselves all hyped up and ready. Amen. God's got a word. I know he do because God he gave me this word. I want to give it to you. But I'm going to turn this over to our own Evangelist Lady Sunshine. Hallelujah. She's going to bring forth some words, even give you some other knowledge you might just need to know. Amen. Please listen to her carefully. Amen. Good day, good day, good day to everyone at Word of the Lamb Worldwide Ministries. We are the official church without walls. Feeding your faith and doubt will starve. We'd like to let you know about our many services, but before that, we'd like to give a warm shout out to some wonderful little lambs. Little Gabby, all her brothers and sisters, Savon, Savion, Davion, Kalia, all the little lambs. We love you. It's wonderful seeing the little lambs and Deaconess Anita and Deacon Stephen in South Carolina. We had a wonderful time just in ministry and fellowship in South Carolina with the book bag drive. And we'd like to encourage you to continue to send your donations of book bags and supplies so that we can even do more for this year and the following year and join us in South Carolina next year, God willing, where it's gonna even be bigger. That being said, we'd like to say happy birthday to all the birthday babies. Deaconess Anita just finished having a wonderful birthday. She just turned legal, 21. And we have so many more birthday babies in this month. That being said, we'd like to invite you to our many services. On Monday, we have Bible study at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Tuesday and Thursdays, we have the prayer line where we will pray for you and with you. Every other Wednesday, we have the Fun Fantastic Book Club. And once a month, on a Wednesday, we have the Women's Ministry Meeting and the Men's Ministry Meeting. And every Friday, we have Friday Encouraging Word, where many times we have guest speakers, Bible trivia, Bible games, poetry night. It might even be you. You never know what's going to happen on Friday Encouraging Word, but you're always guaranteed a good time in God. So come on out and don't be a part of the I Should Have Been There Club. Every first Saturday, we have first fruit prayer between the hours of 12 noon and 1 p.m., giving God the first fruit of all that we have that belongs to him. And every Sunday, you guessed it, right here, live on Zoom and Facebook, and your favorite social media. On Facebook, follow us, like us, and that way you'll be in step with everything of Word of the Lamb and all of our happenings, and you'll be the first to know of what we're doing right in your backyard in your community. And we'd like to let you know at this time, we continue strong unity prayer Monday through Friday, three times daily, you can pick a time just for you and Jesus to pray and meditate and hear his word and listen and lay your petitions at his feet. Unity prayer Monday through Friday, 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. And we have many other happenings and you can stay in tune. Look out for Facebook where we will be posting uh, what we are doing now. August 19th, we will be doing the book bag drive here in Connecticut. We will be doing it in two cities, in the city of Meriden and the city of Hartford. And you will see on your postings that we will post exactly where we will be. Come on out and join us live. We'd love to see you, pray with you, and pray for you. That being said, also, we'd like to let you know that at 
10 a.m. every Sunday, we have our Little Lambs Church for Boys and Girls. We do not televise live the Little Lambs because those are our little treasures, but they can see one another and enjoy one another as they learn about Jesus because Jesus loves the little children. Why don't you bring your little lamb to learn about the great lamb of God? And every Sunday right here, Sunday message, 11 a.m. with our own beloved Pastor Brian Bryant, bringing the word of God to the people of God for such a time as this. Wonderful. So let's get going. Excited about the word today. I'm excited. I'm believing because the word is good for correction, for guidance. It is a light to our feet and a light to our path. That being said, we turn these services over to our own beloved Pastor Brian Bryant. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to pull up there that on your screen. Amen. Glory to God. You get an opportunity to see how you can best donate to us. Amen. Glory to God. You'll see that we have a donate, nice. donate button for PayPal. We have a, a, so, uh, a cash app and we also have a text to give number. Amen. Glory to God. You text your number and follow instructions and 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 then it was one simple step and then you'll be all set. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We just got down to Giveify. So amen. Glory to God. We we posting that as well. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. We're giving all kind of ways to help you. And if you're just desire to send it in the old snail mail way, as they say, well, you can use P.O. Box, Word of the Lamb, P.O. Box 320391, Hartford, Connecticut 06132. Amen. And you can always reach out to us, word of the lamb at outlook.com and send an email to us. We can get back in touch with you. You can always look up for all the things you want to do. And as the woman of God has said earlier, if you want to know about book facts, you've got to follow us. Amen. At word of the lamb dot org or on our Facebook page, which a lot of you are on. Amen. Facebook word of the lamb. Come on and be a part of us so we can be with you. Amen. Glory to God. And you can come and, and, and see what's going on. Just come and like us. Amen. So we can follow us and see what we got going on. Oh, by the way, did you know that next Sunday, Pastor B don't have to preach? Amen. Glory to God. Because every fifth Sunday, someone else brings the word. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I'm looking forward to hearing the word and being able to sit on the side of the table to to be able to eat the word as well. Amen. Glory to God. So I look forward to next Sunday. Amen. When the word will be brought forth. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. With that being said, and all the people that is around us, and all the information that's just been taken then and I thank you and I thank you for all those for those liberal giving amen glory to God hallelujah thank you Jesus hallelujah you know I got a word for you today amen and like I had been speaking earlier I believe you know the the word usually comes to the person before and, and and deals with the person before it deals with anyone else amen the god be the glory hallelujah thank you jesus well hallelujah thank you jesus today i'm truly in need of your prayers today amen so why uh, y'all take the opportunity to, to pray for me amen Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's some people out here in this world who are going through some things, even our members. Amen. And we're going to keep all of you all up in prayer. Amen. But you know, one thing I got to do while I was in South Carolina, I said that I would do it. I'm going to do it again. I said that I would shout out Miss Mary. Amen. Glory to God. 
And I will call, shout out Miss Hall. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If they were two wonderful people who came across the street and just became a blessing to us. Amen. Helped us in our ways and did a few things. Amen. It was wonderful to see them. I can't wait to see you next year. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank you. Karen, Karen Hall. Karen, Karen Hall. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to bless you. Amen. God, God bless you. And I want to let you know one other thing, too. I appreciate all the people on the line. Amen. But I want to let you know that Sister Miller on the line. And when Sister Miller on the line, amen, glory to God, I know I can preach that word. Amen. And all those who tried to slide in on the side and not be, be sown or said, amen, I thank you very much, amen, for being on there and being a part of us, amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Serene and uh, Deacon and Deaconess Anita, who, who were a great host to us, amen. And I appreciate you. And... Uh, Shout out to to uh, our wonderful, wonderful, all our wonderful hosts and amen. Glory to God, and including the Lady Sunshine sister, amen. I appreciate them. It was just so wonderful and treated us so well, amen. And all of the children, amen. And just, just it was just a beautiful time, amen. To glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all got to stay with me and keep me in prayer, amen, a little bit, amen. Glory to God. But I got a word for you, so let us, let us, let us see what God has given me, amen. Glory to God. Might not apply to you, but it, it surely applied to me today, amen, and to this week, amen. But to God be the glory. Father God, in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus. We come before you as humble as we know how. Lord, we ask you, Father God, that you will move in every area. Father, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Giving honor to God and Jesus Christ, who is truly the head of my life. O oh, to all of the XMs, meaning Christians, and all of the people in their prospective places, I send you greetings this morning. Glory to God. Because I want to talk with you. I hope you're ready just to talk with me just a little bit. Amen. Good morning, Sister Bridget. Amen. Glory to God. So wonderful to hear you and see your, see your wonderful face on Facebook. Amen. Can't wait to see you. Good morning, my sister Morales. Amen. My Facebook technician. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're so happy to just hear and see from y'all. We love y'all. Amen. Glory to God. And all those that are on the conference line, we love y'all. Amen. Glory to God. But I, I got a title today, and it's, it's a little different. Amen. God put me in one way, but it kind of moved me in another but my title is when you're in neutral, when you're in neutral. So I, I um, been sitting around for a while and sometimes you feel like you're just in a place, you know, nothing, just, you just there. You just sitting there, we've all been there. Now, I went to Webster's Dictionary to find out what neutral meant. You know, I found a lot of different varieties, but I picked this one. It says neutral uh, means a position of disengagement. How many of y'all have been disengaged at times? You kind of do some things. Some of us have put ourselves into neutral because we parked ourselves away. Amen. Oh, go hold oh, the Holy Ghost is letting me know automatically. Amen. That sometimes we put ourselves in the pause mode. Amen. So that we can just be by ourselves for a moment. So we can get our thoughts and our mindsets together. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Have you ever been in a place where you can't seem to go forward or can't seem to go reverse or even to the side or to the other side? You just seem to be in limbo as they say mm -hmm. 
You ever been in that area where it seems like you you're you you're trying to pray and yet it feels like even though you're praying, it doesn't seem like it's doing any effectiveness, amen. Or you you're uh you're trying to 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 get a praise on, but your your praise is not being a feeling like it's effective, amen. Glory to God. See in a spot of being neutral. Seems like you can't do anything. It's almost like I'm just here floating through. You know, or oh, we've been through that case and some of us are going through it right now and some of us are in that scenario right now. But I'm here to help you today because I want to let you know something. We're about to pull the cover off a of neutral. <laughs> you know, hey amen. We're going to expose some things in a certain way because I want you to get this understanding as God gave it to me. Amen. Glory to God. See, I want you to remember what it says in Colossians, uh, but I want to stop right there and ask you, do you have your sword with you? The sword is the word of God. It's the only offensive weapon that you have. Amen. You should always carry it with you. Amen. You don't let everybody just read to you. You need to read it for yourself. Amen. You should always know what the book and the Bible says. And you can't always say to me, I don't have it because if you got a phone, hallelujah, that is able to get an app, you can get it. And if you're going to have cable to get an app, amen, then grab your Bible. Bible. Hallelujah. You should always keep one with you or handy some kind of way. Amen. If that means you got to go into the corner and blow the dust off the one that you got. Amen. Come on and bring it on out of there. Amen. Glory to God. If yours is amen. all beat up and everything is falling all out. Amen. Glory to God. I know that means it's well used and hopefully it's well used by you. But amen. If it's not, amen. Glory to God. Grab that Bible. Amen. Glory to God. If you got a Bible over there and you missing some pages out of it. Amen. Glory to God. You done used it enough now. Yeah, it's your, your turn to concern to get a new one. Amen. Glory <laughs> to God. In the name of Jesus. I always try to keep your Bibles with you. Amen. Amen. And if you can, have different versions. Amen. So that you can get some things. Because some things might not be clear to you in one. They might be clear to you in another. Amen. I, 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 I preach out of many different Bibles. But... Today I'm going to be preaching out of the English Standard Bible. I seem to I use that Bible because it's easier to break down, but I read from the King James Version. Amen. I'm just being able to to let you know that this I I, I like the NIV. I mean, there's so many versions of the Bible I like. I mean, the Amplified and the Message Bible. Amen. Glory to God. We can get into a whole lot of things and just talk about Bibles. I might not get through my message. Amen. But this message right here is to help somebody. Amen. So you got your Colossians, uh, for the first chapter. You got verse 17 up in front of you. Amen. And amen. We're going to be moving around. There's quite a few little scriptures I want to give to you. Amen. And he said, and he is before all things. And in him, all things hold together. Oh, the Bible is telling you that in the midst of all the things that you're going through, because when you're in neutral, so many stuff that can happen into you. You know, there's so many things that can happen, and it's pushing you in different directions, amen. It's like being a little bobble. Have you ever seen those little bobbles on the water that they go fishing with, and they just sit there, and they just sit in the water, and all they do is just bobble up and down, back and forth, back and forth, round, forward, back, forward, back, wherever the current is taking them. Sometimes that's how we are in our lifetimes because we're trying to get somewhere, and there's a lot of interference. You think that it's a neutral, but sometimes it's just interference. Some of us don't know that our prayers are really getting through, but it just seems that way. Oh, I remember when they were talking to, um, I forgot uh, what it is, and I'm going to paraphrase, but the man of God was sitting and praying, but they said that uh, we heard your prayers, but the prince of Persia was holding us up. Hey, Amen. So we had to send an angel to go out there and get rid of those things so I can give you the information that you needed. Because the God, you know, sometimes the enemy don't want you to get what already God had already sent to you. Amen. He heard your prayers, but yet he sent it to you, but your enemy is trying to stop you from doing it. So now what he did is park you in neutral. So you can't get nowhere. Oh, sometimes we're in a holding pattern. 
Oh yeah, there's sometimes in our lives where we're just there, where we're in a holding pattern, and it, it is a good time at that time every once in a while because that is is a holding pattern so that we can get prepared for our next assignment. Mm hmm. Sometimes we're in neutral because we're in another assignment, and assignment is there, and we're just gathering all the things that they need and sometimes god's got to park you someplace and now it's a difference between park and neutral you know i just want to let you know that so when you park there you stuck you stayed there real quick when you're in neutral you know anything can happen <laughs> you know you don't believe me put your car in neutral and put it on the hill mm -hmm. put your car in neutral while you drive and it still keep rolling you know <laughs> Yeah, you 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 put your you don't you don't believe me when your car stall out, hey man, you put your car in park, it ain't going nowhere. But if you put your car in neutral, you can push your car. Oh, by the way, don't they tell you if you go to the car wash, hey man, they'll, they'll put your car in what? Neutral, because they don't. That and you put your car in neutral, whatever that they moving is going to move you along. Hey Amen. Glory to God. When the repo man come get your car, he like to put your car in neutral. <laughs> Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Make it easier for him. He don't have to, but he like to. <laughs> you, know? you know. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes uh, we feel lost when we are neutral some of us have feel lost i mean i've been through it a lot i don't know about anybody else but we all feel feel like it's it, it's it's a uh, um we lost in it and sometimes we feel that way and we get a different thing going on and we gotta do what we gotta do sometimes it's hard to be sitting there and you're trying to get through things and you fighting every particular things usually in neutral you got a lot of stuff coming at you you got the people want to pull on your tail want you to do something that you're trying to do you got the people on the other side trying to get you to do something you don't want to do and the ones that are on there who are bothering you to do something that that you know you shouldn't do <laughs> you know you got all you got all the dudes going on up in there and you're still trying to fight them amen glory to god we feel lost, sometimes uncertain, sometimes unsure. But the Bible tells us some things that bring us through, trying to get us out of there, because when we're in neutral, we've got to have some more positive things going on. It's just like when you're in a bad state in your mind. You don't want to hear any negative things. When you're not feeling very well and things aren't going right, you don't want to hear nothing negative. The problem sometimes is people want to tell you about some things that are biblical and you don't want to hear that either. <laughs> you know, but sometimes you you gotta you know they want to give you some things. You know, it's not to hurt you, but it's just to heal you. You know, and maybe it might not be the right timing, but sometimes it's not your time and it's God's timing because sometimes you'll hear it and you'll be like mad about it, what you heard, even though you know it's a good word, you don't want to hear it at that moment. But somehow it'll sink in and you remember it because you surely be talking about it. I don't know why they was talking about that, but you remembered it. It was in your mind. See, God knows what to do. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 3 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Oh, no, I'm going to wait for a second because some of y'all said, hold up, I'm trying to get that down. That is Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6. English Standard Version. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Somebody might need to highlight that. It says in all your ways. That means all the attitudes you got. <laughs> you know, all the things that's going on in your mind. All of the personalities that are coming out. <laughs> you need to acknowledge him. And he will make straight your path. 
See, when you're in neutral, you can be pushed in directions you might not want to go. Mm -hmm. At times, you're in neutral um, because you're learning. See, when you're learning in the neutral area, amen, is because God is showing you some things that you need to do, but you're just looking and learning while you're there because you got to take it in now. What you're learning, glory to God, you still have to put God in front of it. God's got to be first, amen. Otherwise, what you do is you start learning and leaning, learning and leaning in the wrong direction, and it pulls you further and further away from them. How many of y'all having a hard time trying to pray? Hmm? How many of you have having a hard time trying to get to prayer? You know? How many of y'all are finding it more of a chore just to get online? Wait a minute. Think about this. We're a church without walls. We get online. Is people are finding it hard to get online because the enemy wants you to think that it's hard to get online but yet if you flip it around if you the moment that you say I don't want to go to church today I'm gonna do something else you can still get online and you'll be online doing a whole bunch of other things but not giving the time to the Lord see and you'll feel like you're doing something accomplishing something when you need to get an understanding that the enemy has been fooling you see you're in neutral and he is pulling you in the wrong direction see but there's some times when you can learn something because the bible tells you in psalms 32 and 8 it says i and i'm talking that's what the lord says i Amen. Somebody help me out out here on the top. Amen. Glory to God. It says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. Uh-oh. You mean to tell me that in every area of my life, even when I'm parked in neutral, the Lord's going to instruct me, right, and teach me in the way that I should go. It says, I will counsel you with my eyes, I upon you. If God is counseling you, that means he's watching out for you. So that means he's seeing you. So when you think that our oh, Lord is not watching me, he don't care about me. I done heard that a few times from people. He not care about me. How can he say he not care about you when he said he's going already got his eye on you? You know, I've heard people doing that when you're in neutral, you, you don't know where to go. You're trying to go somewhere. It's like swimming. It's like swimming, but you're staying in the same spot. <laughs> it's like it's like you done took a run, but you're still running in the same place. Amen. Glory to God. It's like driving a car, but you're still in the same spot. <laughs> you know, it's you know you when you're in neutral, you can you can you feel like you're going through the motions, but you ain't getting nowhere. It feels like the words that you say is bouncing off people. Nobody's hearing you. You can't get it. Nobody can get you. They trying to get somewhere, and you you're trying to get some places and. What happens is we sit there in our neutralness and some of us start to take up residence. Oops. Ooh, did I say that? <laughs> you know. Oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to break that down. Ain't that right? We some of us take up residence in neutral. Yeah, I know who you are. We all been in residence in neutral at times. Some of us are residents in neutral. It happens to everybody that we're in neutral. But it depends on how long you're going to stay in neutral. Some of y'all have been in neutral for a very long time, and you need to get out of it. Your excuses and the things that you have is only for you to make you feel better. But neutral ain't the place for you. 
Oh, don't get mad. I ain't talking about you. No, oh, amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. I'm just talking what the words say. The Bible said, I will instruct you and I will counsel you with my eye upon you. See, we need to learn to go forward. So you can start by letting go of our past. Some of our past causes us to stay in neutral. It doesn't cause us to be part. It causes us to get to neutral because we were parked there before, but we got in a neutral because we got it. We're trying to get through it, but yet we still holding on to the past and don't know what the future's got to bring. So you're trying to break free from something, but you don't know how to break free from it. Sometimes you just got to cut the strings. It hurt to cut the strings. Oh, sometimes you got to stop doing some things. Oh, sometimes you got to stop being the enablers. Mm. Sometimes you got to stop being that, that individual that's there, you know, sometimes we have it in our heart set that when people are hurting, we want to make sure that they don't hurt. Amen. But sometimes we can't, we got to let them go through some of it so they can understand. Sometimes you can't be the superman or superwoman, superchild. Sometimes you got to step back and allow them to falter. And because people love you in this lifetime, they try to help you. And because they help you, you find yourself being helped and, and you are like, okay, they're helping me float along, but you still ain't going nowhere. They're helping you to float along, but you still floating in the same spot. You get close to your goal, but you keep going back because you like the familiar instead of the unfamiliar. Because sometimes, oh, I don't know why I'm going here. But sometimes, you know, you got to be able to come out of that scenario. But yet you feel comfortable in it. And some people like that. Some people have what I like to call a poor me's. As long as somebody is paying attention to them, they feel in a certain way that I'm getting the attention that I need. When I need to go away. And then they get mad if you ask them a question. That concerns something that they know that they should be out of. They get mad at you. But you know, that's all right. You can have the poor me's. I'm going to let you know a little something. You know, you can fool everybody on this line, but you can't fool God. And God wants you out of, God don't want you in the neutral area that you're in. Oh, I might not have too many people listening to me or too many amens today, but that's okay. Uh, it's all right with it. Amen. Glory to God. I've got to give you what the word had to say. And if you don't like it, that's okay. And if you do like it, that's all right too. And if it's, if it, and if you got to say amen, say amen. And if you got to say ouch, say ouch. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. But we're going to get some things in and out the way. We got to pull the covers off. Amen. Glory to God. We can't just let the band-aid sit there. Amen. We got to pull the band-aid. Yeah. Because if we don't pull the band-aid out, I ain't going to never get healed. Amen. Sometimes you got to pull the band-aid off even when you ain't ready. <laughs> no. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So we're going to do just that. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. Amen. So I will instruct you and teach you to go. I will counsel you. Amen. Proverbs, it, it tells us we got to let go of our past. But Proverbs 4, 25 through 27 tells us this. Look, let your eyes look directly forward. See, once you let go of the past, you got to start looking in a direction. And here's the thing. When you're in neutral, you're floating. You can see the direction of where you want to go, but it seems like it might be the most uncomfortable thing to be there because everything about it seems to disrupt everything in your life because it's getting ready to change your life. Oh, my God. But some of us changing our lives are going to be better because, amen, God says, I'm not allowing you to go backwards because some people want to put their, want to go, go from neutral into reverse, amen, and go back to where they were when God is trying to put you into some place where you're going. Amen. You have the ability to go back into where you were, but 
you realize that when you go back there, it was hard of a fight. It might be easy to go into it, but it'd be harder to get out of it. And you know what? Some of us have that thought in our mindset. I've been there, and I ain't going back there. That was just too rough for me. Amen. But when Amen. you're in neutral, when you're in neutral, you don't know. You're still going on. You can see that little piece. You know that how you look up there, you can see like that little 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 spot of stuff, and you go, "Man, I like to see what's going on." It's like walking into a new job. You don't know what you're getting into, even though they told you something. You don't know if it's going to be the same as when you touch it. You know, every job has a good thing. It reads really good, and you get there's a whole different story sometimes. You know? sure is. But when you get there, you're not sure. But for some reason, when you step there and you and you spend some time, especially when you already poor on Lord, Lord's going to meet me. Here. When you get there, you that light that everybody else is looking at like, man, who is this? Look at what God is doing. You know, and he does it. Amen. Proverbs 4, 25 and 27 through 27 says this. Let your eyes look directly forward. Your gaze be straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet. Then all your ways be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. See, the Lord, I'm telling you this, the Lord wants you to get out of neutral and put yourself in gear. Now, a lot of us want to go forward. But sometimes we want to put our gears into reverse. Because once again, like I said, it feels comfortable sometimes to be where you were. But the fight that you had to get to where you are now, do you still want to go through it? Mm -mm -mm. So therefore, we try to go forward, but we're in neutral. And while we're in neutral, we're still finding our way through. Because now you're hearing all the things that are coming around you. Some things that you hear, some things that you should do, some things that you shouldn't do, some things around here, all your little things and temptations all hanging around there, trying to pull you away from that particular place. I don't want you to go into drive. I just need you to stay into neutral. Because when you're in neutral, it means that you're in a position of disengagement. Hmm. Uh oh. Uh oh, yeah, the enemy got you, and don't even, you don't even know it. But I'm trying to hear this to do some things. Amen. Glory to God. See, the Bible tells us in Revelations, Amen. Revelations tw uh, 22 16 through 21. Amen. Glory to God. It says, I, Jesus, have sent my, my angel to testify to you about these things of the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. Let, and let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirst come. Let the one who desires take, water, the, take the water of life without price. I warn everyone who hears the words of this prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things say, surely I come soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. See, the grace of the Lord shall be with all. Amen. Glory to God. God is calling you into an area that you've been in because you've been in neutral. He's been waving at you. Amen. Glory to God. He's been looking at you. He's that one over in the corner going, yoo-hoo. And yep, you... 
still sitting over there. They waving at you. Got a big sign. Stop here. Jesus here, and you and you 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 don't even know if you want to go there because even though you look in the sign and you say that sounds like it'd be a good place for me, there's some other things that go on in the neutral area that try to get you to go there. You don't want to go there. If you go there, everything will change. Whoa. How many of y'all heard that? Oh, man, if I do this, everything going to change. You know that internal fight y'all be having with yourself. And yes, your internal self is right. Everything will change. But I'm going to let you know, it ain't going to change for the worse. It's going to change for the better. But, hey, misery love company. <laughs> So, Misery wants you to have, come on and hang out with him. See, I'm reminded what Hebrews uh, 12 and 1 says. It says, therefore, since we're surrounded by so great a crowd of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. In order for us to run this race, we got to get closer to who? To the Lord thy God. And in order for us to get closer to the Lord thy God, we got to put our trust in him. And in order for us to put our trust in him, we got to go out of a place that we are considerably hanging out in, which is the place of neutral. And into a place where it's not. Oh, did I tell you you're about to get shifted into drive? See, because... Now you're at that point and some of us are like, yeah, I'm ready now. I'm I'm tired of being in neutral. I've been sitting here in neutral for a long time. Some of us been sitting there for so, so long, we can probably count some decades. Amen. Glory to God. Some of us have kind of, I've been in neutral for 10 to 20, 30 years. Uh, some of us have been in neutral for only about a couple of weeks. Some of us have been in neutral for years and uh, decades. And some of us have been in neutral for um, as long as they could remember. Almost at the door, but never getting to it. Well, today is the day, then, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the day, people of God. The day is the day, good, good people of God, the blessed people of the Lord. That it's time for you to shift into drive. Oh, well, you know, and there are those who know how to drive a car, and all those. Who have been around the car and all those know that it's shifting in neutral does not get you anywhere but you can go forward or reverse amen glory to god hallelujah and you desiring where you're going i heard somebody say i can't go backwards i've been there and i'm not going in that direction i've been through all that trouble why should i need to do that when i know that god's got something greater for me and so why should i go back into worseness when i can go into greatness i don't know about anybody else but i just know that i'm not going to step into some some bad stuff when i'm going to go into some good stuff amen i just don't know about that i i don't need to be sitting there uh trying to drink some muddy water when the water on the other side is nice and clear when i know that the upper and lower springs are, are made by him so that i can drink the living water of the lord my god i don't know about anybody else but i do know about what he's doing in our direction especially i'm talking about myself now i don't know what you gonna say but i know one thing for sure is that i've been hanging out in neutral for just a little bit and i'm tired of being there because i had a red my engines and I know that they are right. I done went out there and checked my oil and knew that I had enough anointing. But yet I looked at my tires and my tires was ready. But yet I still didn't know why I wasn't going anywhere. And that's because God said, now I'm going to put you into drive. Amen. All right. Oh, God. Ephesians 4, Ephesians, the third chapter and the 14th through the 21st verse says this. For this reason... I bow my knee before the Father, for whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you the strength with power through his spirit 
in your inner being. Oh, come on. I'm going to stop right there. It is because of your inner being that you've been parked in neutral. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm letting that sink in for a second. And he says that I... I'm strengthening the power through his spirit in your inner being. 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love. Oh, once you are rooted and grounded, you don't already know that my rooted and groundedness is getting ready to move something. My car is feeling pretty good. I got to put my stuff into what? Drive, because it's time for me to get out of this situation. It's time for me to get out of this little place. I'm tired of being in a place like this. Why should I hang out in the darkness or right near the crest? Right near the crest of light when I can just drive into the marvelous light. I'm getting ready to roll myself out of here. I done heard it said, oh, back in the day they had speed buggy. I don't back in the day I heard rumor zoom zoom. I think it's about time that we get ready to get there because now we can't just walk there. I know that we are not might not be in the same shape we was when we first got there, but God gave us every equipment to get there. So that that means that your that your cars is still sputtering that's all right every time you get closer to the light it gets tuned up Amen. Mm, mm, mm. oh hallelujah 18 may that in love may have strength to comprehend with all of the saints and with it, the bread and the length and the height and the depth and to know that the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, mm -hmm, verse 20, now to him who is able, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we can ask or think. Ooh. According to the power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Oh, amen. Glory to God. Ladies and gentlemen, people of God, sisters and brothers in Christ, it's time to shift into gear. It's time to get out of neutral. I, we know that we might be comfy where you are. But in order to do your assignments, you got to move out of neutral. Oh, I'm going to say that again. In order to do the assignments that God has already laid upon you, you got to move out of neutral. You can't stay there because the assignments that he's giving you is for you to move forward. He said, bring this to all the four corners of the world. You better turn your vehicle is already on. All you got to do is put your foot on the brake and move it into drive and release that brake pedal a little bit and step on that gas oh if you are got a clutch you know how to ease off the clutch and put it into drive and, and you know press on that gas a little bit so that it won't stall on you you know what to do You've tried it before. And some of us have stayed in neutral. Because sometimes it's a little different to step out in some places. And it's only because you're stepping out on faith. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But you always said that you trust the Lord. 
And if you trust the Lord, you're going to have to step out on faith. And even if it means something different because it feels going to feel a little different because your body system has been so used to being in neutral that being in something new is going to be funny feeling. It's going to just make you feel funny. You might get the shakes. You might get nervous. But all that nervousness, all that did was just shake your body up. All that did was just shake your mind up. All that did was just shake you up. And then all of a sudden, you became the second person because you will let God be the first. And he'll bring you through. Oh, once you decide to put the car in the drive, amen, glory to God. I forgot to tell you that you become the second seat driver. <laughs> amen. Glory to God. Once you put the car in drive, it's, a, it's a automatically that once you put it in drive, you go to the second seat. Amen. God takes over. Amen. John, the 15th chapter and 16th verse. I'm almost done, y'all. I'm ready for you. I hear, your, I hear some of y'all engines rolling. I hear them, I, I hear somebody stepping on the gas right now talking about I'm ready to get out of this scenario. I've been hanging around here too long and it's just way too much for me. Amen. Glory to God. And you're trying to get somewhere where well, amen. God then brought me over here and he told me to help you along your way. Amen. You don't call I don't call G O D. That's better than triple A. Amen. Glory to God. I don't call S O N the Son of God. Hallelujah. Better than Jal or any other place that's going to go out there and try to tow you away. Amen. But all he wants you to do is just say that I I I I I'm tired of being in my neutral area. And the moment that you say I'm tired of being neutral area, all he gonna say is put your car in drive. And it's going to start to roll. And the good part is that you'll keep your eye forward. You don't have to look back. You already know what it was like looking back. You ain't missing nothing. You know, you're getting ready to go into your new things. You see, you 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 got yourself almost messed up somewhere along the line. I don't know why I'm going here either. But some of y'all thought that you were just on a trip. Amen. Glory to God. Cause trips end, and your trip was ending in the in the neutral area. Amen. But I'm letting you know that you're not on a trip. You're on a journey, and journeys don't end. So you're gonna have to continue on. Amen. It was nice that you spent a little bit of time in a neutral area. Some of us to learn, some of us to gather our thoughts, and some of us to do some other things. But now it's time to get going. Amen. John 15, 16 says this. You did not choose me, says the Lord. I'm just talking to you. Somebody really needs to know this right now. Because you're sitting there and you're saying, well, maybe I like, I heard you. Maybe I like being in neutral. Maybe you, you know, because you always got, you just keeping that resistance in your mindset. I like being in neutral. I don't like making no waves. I don't like to do the particular. I don't, I don't like, I don't, I don't, like, I don't, I don't, I don't. John 16, 15 and 16 says, you did not, you did not choose me. But I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, that your fruit should abide. Oh, I want to stop right there. In order for your fruit to abide, that means you got to get yourself out of neutral and put yourself in the drive. You might like hanging out where you were in your familiar, but God said, I want to take you to an unfamiliar place and I want to put you in there because the unfamiliar people are going to even might even treat you better than you've been treated before. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, you don't believe me? Let's go back and read this again. You did not choose me. I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit 
should abide. So that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. You must go forward, y'all. You've been in a holding pattern. You've been in the neutral zone. You've been held up in an area where it seems like there's no ifs, no ands, no buts. It seems like you can't get forth. And what they like to put it on you is that it's an area where depression loves to hang out. Oh, I'm here to put a light in the depressionable area because I sent it back to where it belongs in the neutral zone because you done came out of the neutral area. You are no longer the same. Amen. I want to talk to some people because they need to know this. I want to bring you into Philippians 3 and 14. I'm almost done. You see, because the Bible says that as you get ready to go, he wants you to move, right? I'm trying to tell you, God says moving. He wants you to move. He says, I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, that means he's put you, in order for you to be pressing forward, that means you got to move on. And in order for you to move on, you know what that means? You got to put yourself in drive. You're just about to be shifted. I don't know about anybody else, but I can feel the shift coming in there. Somebody lean back and fell forward. Ooh, they did this. Mm -hmm. Because their car's ready. Some of them are coming out right now. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, by Amen. the way, for those that's been there for a really long time, this is 2023. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You've been there for a long time. Amen. But glory to God. We we God got use for you here. He was you was in neutral till now, but now he said, I need you over here. Come on. Some of us have been holding on for a long time. Some of us are afraid to even speak the word of God because they feel that I get nervous, but don't know that God said that if you open up your mouth, I'll feel it. Mm. Amen. Mm. There's some stuff right down that you know that you have done throughout the things that you have said, I'm going to just step forward and do, and I'm going to just go ahead and do it. And every time you did it, you was nervous at doing it. But once you did it, you said, you know, that wasn't that bad. Amen. Amen. See, I have pressed forward on, on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You've been in neutral state. For a while. But according to Romans 8, the 38th and the 39th chapter, I believe that even though you've been in a neutral state, God is moving you in ways that you need to be moved. And oh, even when the adversary it's trying to pull up on you and oh, he's going to use your friends, your children, your kids, your family members, your sisters, your brothers, your cousins. He's going to use the TV right now. He's going to use every little thing. Somebody right now, even the ones on Facebook might be listening to me on Facebook. Something done caught their attention and pulled them away. Somebody's over there doing something, but they're playing a game. Somebody's sitting over there. Amen. Listening to me, but still trying to do some work. Amen. See, God sees that the enemy's trying to pull you away from it because he wants you to hear it now don't hear half of a message because half of a message ain't going to do you but half good oh oops oops did i say that <laughs> oh did i say that i'm sorry if i said that yeah i said it <laughs> you know i ain't sorry about it i'm said it <laughs> amen glory to god yeah i said it you know Amen. I'm just, I mean, let's tell the truth and shame the devil. Amen. We know, Amen. we know how it is. Some of us will go out here. We've got all, so many other things that we want to do in the world. We act like, oh, okay, I'm going to go vacuum while I'm listening to the word of God. Now, how come you couldn't vacuum after the word of God? You don't know why. Because the enemy just told you, go ahead and vacuum. Mm. You ain't going to miss nothing. They can't see you. You online. 
But God said he keep his eye on you all the time. And do you not know if he shows you, if he's looking at you, what he's, what do you think he's showing the pastor? Yeah, uh -huh. I see you. <laughs> you know. Amen. Yeah, Romans 8. 38 and 39 says this, and I'm, I'm almost done, y'all, I'm almost done. When I say I'm almost done, I mean I'm done, but I'm rolling, I'm rolling all in there. It, 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 it's Sister Serene, Sister Serene right now, get my coat and my keys. We about, we all, almost on the way. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah, because we're going to have to run out now. <laughs> you know? Amen. Glory to God. For I am sure, oh, I am positively sure, I really mean this in my heart. I am sure. That neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor death, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. He's already calling you out of the neutral. He's saying to you, come. Because he heard him say it, come. He said, come in Revelation. He said, come. If you're thirsty, come. He said, I want you to come out of there. He said, I know you've been in the dark. Come on out. He said, I know you've been stagnant. Come on out. I know that you've been hurt, but come on out. I know that you got tears. I know, I know you want to wallow in some of the pain. Come on out. Because where I'm at, I'm going to take the pain away. <coughs> oh. It's time to shift and to drive. <coughs> oh, yeah. It's time to shift and to drive. It's time to get out of that area that you was in. It's time to get out of that scenario you was in. You might have been angry and staying in neutral because you wanted to stay angry because some of us want to be angry. It's time to get out of that. That ain't going to do you any good in your assignments that God has for you. Some of us are afraid to move to another level because we see people and people who look might even talk better than you but i'm reminded of what moses said he said i i got a speech speech problem <laughs> and god said i'm gonna send your brother aaron and moses i i just i'm just assuming now i, I assume that he had said all right he's gonna talk to aaron and what god said was I'm going to talk to you, and you're going to instruct Aaron. See, God is calling you out. No need for you to be in neutral. You might as well come and get all that you can get. God said, I got so much for you. He said, there's so much more I, I, I'm a requiring, and there's so much more I want to give to you. It's not an easy road, y'all. Yeah. But if you've been in neutral for way too long, then, oh, I'm talking to you. You know who you are. You've been in neutral way too long. You've been in neutral in your past and present that nothing that you're doing now really is affecting it. Matter of fact, some of us have been in neutral so long that we don't know that we're affecting other people and we're affecting them in a negative way. Whoa, I, what do I mean by that? I mean, if I stay in a neutral area, somebody might have been like, man, here come him now. Every time you see it, he always complaining or he's got something such and such and it, you know his spirit just so such and such and they got the same excuse I'm just getting through it 
and don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say that people aren't taking time to get through it. I'm not trying to tell you to speed up in your time to get there. I'm just trying to tell you that in order for you to do certain things, you can't stay in a neutral area. Amen. Because God said that in his mindset, he lets you know. He said, give all your problems to me, all your all your problems you give to unto him. Amen. For you to give the problems unto him, you got to get out of the neutral area and get into drive. Because when you're driving him, he's going to take the problems away. It will start off little. I'm not saying that the drive is going to bring you and you're going to be instantly over there to the other side of happiness and, and the things of that nature. It takes a little while to drive there. But wouldn't you rather have a little less going on in, in, your, in the mindset, a little less to be handling in your body system? I know that we all can take some things and some of us have that Superman and Superwoman mentality that we're going to hold all these things together and then they hold it together until they break. And then they break. And they're not able to hold it together. And then they really messed up in the neutral area. And then there's people who God will send to go right into the neutral area. Because they're not afraid to go in there. To come to get you. To bring you out. They say, come and grab my hand and let me lead you on this way. Amen. They became the light in the darkness. They became the things that you need to bring you forth. And all they wanted to do is bring you into an area where you can drive again. For some of you, you might not have driven in a while, but you still have the ability to do it. It's time to stop sitting on the sidelines. And it's time for you to drive yourself out of this particular area. Shift your thoughts into drive and come out of neutral. Some of us have came back into it and it's going to take a while to get you there. But amen, if you put it in your mindset that I'm going to be driving soon. I'm going to be shifting into drive soon. I'm going to come out of my scenario soon. I'm not going to sit here and wallow and like everyone else, I'm going to move sooner then later, because I know that who I serve and whom I serve. And I just need you to get that understanding. For those of you, hallelujah, who are on the line, whether you're on the conference line, whether you're on Facebook, and your desire to be saved, to be out of neutral, to be out of the neutral scenario, would you please take the opportunity to give us a call at 1-302-202-1110. Use conference code 940792. Amen. Glory to God. For those that are interested in desiring to be saved, I just want to let you know, I cannot save you, but the Lord Jesus Christ can. Oh, it's him who saved me. Oh, it's him to save all those that are on the line. Amen. Oh, it's him that can save you from your area and move you out of that neutral place into a place where you can be driving. For those who have dropped the ball, and many of us have, oh, we've done it throughout our lifetimes. For those we're asking you, don't you come on and be with us. Amen. We want you to come on and Hang with us, amen. We want you to take the opportunity to be with us, amen. But we also want you to take the opportunity to pray with us. And if you will pray with us like this, it will be a wonderful thing. Most heavenly and kind, Father. We have dropped the ball, Father. We have fallen short of all that you have put before us. And Lord, we repent right now in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus. 
that all things work according to your will. Now, Father, have your way in and out of our seasons. Lord, I'm asking you, Father God, that you will touch me like never before. And even the anointing that I had before, Father, it won't be enough, Father. I desire that you make us a new creature. And I ask you that you continue to hold us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. For those who are looking <clears throat> for a church home, amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> And if you're looking for a church home, amen, glory to God, Word of the Lamb Ministries is a beautiful place to be, amen, where we, we, we teach and we preach, and amen, glory to God, hallelujah, we'll do all the things that we have and all the things that we need, glory to the name of Jesus. But if you're desiring for a church home, and you have went on our line at www.wordofthelamb.org and read what we believe in. Amen. Glory to God. And you should always read that. And you should always read that for any church that you go to. You should always read what they believe in. Amen. And if you have read what you believe in and agree with what we believe in. Amen. Then we open the doors of the church to you for those who desire to become members. Amen. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? If you're on Facebook, you can dial 1-302-202-1110. Use conference code 940792. We will be keep you on hold for a second while you're there. We'll hear you, but we'll just say, hold on for a minute as we are. We'll take the opportunity to get with you as soon as we finish a few things. Amen. For those that are on our conference line and desiring to be saved and desiring to be a member. Amen. Come on and just hold on a little bit. We'll be right with you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For those, glory to God, that have been around, Father God, there are some that have been on, that are what we like to call on watch. Those are the people who have church homes but haven't been there in a while. And we keep them on watch while they're desiring whether they were to go back to their church homes. Amen. And it will give us, being on watch gives you an opportunity to participate in all of the things that we do and cause, you know, just be around us and, you know, do all the things that you would at your church. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's been a quite a few people who have joined us who were part of a watch program and now they're part of our, our, our daily people, amen. Glory to God. And we appreciate each and every one of them. Amen, to God be the glory. Hallelujah, if you're desiring to be put on watch, would you come, would you come, would you come? Once again, one three two three oh two two oh two use conference code two oh two excuse me one three oh two two oh two one 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 zero use conference code nine four zero seven nine two amen if you're on our conference lines hold on amen we'll be right with you just say amen glory to god thank you for our facebook technician for putting out these things on facebook amen glory to god hallelujah for those Hallelujah. I'm asking, would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Well, Father, I have done what you asked me to do. I have preached for a word, Father God, to get everybody from being in neutral into drive. Lord, we have asked for those who desire to be saved. We have prayed for those who dropped the ball. We had opened up the church, Father God, for those who desire to be members. And we even opened up it for those 
who wanted to be on watch. Father, we have done all that you have asked us to do. Now, Father, we ask these things. If you're desiring prayer, in your, you can call our conference line at 1-302-202-1110. Use conference code 940792. We will be praying for you and we will be on there for about a good 15 minutes or so. For those that are on our Zoom line and our conference line, amen, if you're desiring prayer, please hold on. For all those that are on our Facebook page, hallelujah, God bless each and every one of you for coming today. But if you're desiring prayer, please call the number that's provided. For those who just wanted to fellowship and say hello, please call that number and say hello. It's always good to hear voices and just put a smile on my face. Each and every one of you will be so wonderful. In the midst of that, I'm asking you to do a few things. I ask you to keep up the Morales family and keep up the Chappelle family, both of them up in prayer, amen, and sending comforts to their families, Lord. I ask you to do that. I ask you to pray for them. I ask you to keep them in your prayers, you know, that we keep them covered. There's a few things out here that, that they might need. I ask you to bless them in, in ways that you can bless them. Amen. Listen, for those that are online on Facebook, amen. If you desire prayer or even just to say hello, 1-302-202-1110. Use conference code 940792. And we love each and every one of you. God bless you, Sister Bridget. God bless you, Sister Miller. God bless you, Sister Morales. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for all those wonderful emojis and all the things that you put before you. And I want to just say to you, God bless each and every one of you. And we love you all. Amen. If you, like I said, call us, say hi to us. It'd be wonderful. In the midst of that, for those that are on Facebook, amen. We appreciate you and love you. And we ask you that you be dismissed may the lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another in jesus mighty name amen god bless those on facebook amen glory to god in the name of jesus hallelujah thank you god thank you john hallelujah